like the best kept secret of the freaking cardiovascular training fitness industry. And it's one that most general consumers that are coaches and or running coaches or runners or haven't utilized this in the past don't really hear or think of. Because when we think of doing cardio or running, the biggest mistake that we do is that everyone wants to go all out all the time. And there is a time and a place for that. There is absolutely an appropriate time to do all around harder intensities or threshold intensities. But zone two is that bread and butter of when you're increasing that heart rate to 60 to 70%. So a little bit more of what your max heart rate is, but you are able to still accumulate a ton of volume. And what you get from zone two specifically is this robust cardiovascular response where you can do the thing that we love to talk about all the time is creating a cardiovascular base or a cardio base. So this reserve of cardiovascular capacity that you're able to pull from when you're doing higher, harder intensities, recovery between intervals bowls deep in a race, all of these things. So think about it like when you're doing like your hypertrophy, maybe your GPP block um, and your strength training block, you're doing like four by 12 in things. You're creating just this capacity, this reserve, um, high volume, but you can kind of do a little bit more um, within those rep ranges to accumulate that. Kind of same here in zone two. So you aren't doing the most fatiguing work, it sometimes can feel almost like it's too easy. And that is the point. So zone two is intentional. I want to be very clear about that. Zone two is very intentional training. Um, it's not just walking around the grocery store. It is slightly increased intentional cardiovascular training. And so within this, we are able to help our bodies increase their ability to deliver oxygen to our muscles, which allows us to do work, produce more work, do these things during our physical activity. So this looks like things like increased capillary density. So capillaries are the tiny, tiny, tiny arteries that develop um, in response to cardiovascular training that allow us to get basically more highways into our muscles that bring blood. So think of your bloodstream as highways and the cars are oxygen or hemoglobin bringing in oxygen as passengers and you have four passengers and you can release the passengers in the muscle. But if you have more highways, you're able to get more oxygen to that muscle. And so with that being said, that oxygen has to be used by something and that is mitochondria. And so doing cardiovascular training increases mitochondrial content um, in or quality. So either your mitochondria have become more powerful, more capable, or you can develop more mitochondria and you essentially get better at just not just delivering, but uptaking muscle. So for so or uptaking oxygen with inner muscle. For so many of you watching this, your fitness isn't limited by the fact your body isn't able to get that oxygen to your muscles. It's limited by its ability to take it up and use it. So this type of training helps our body get really, really good at doing this. So it's high repetitive, um, easy contraction training that allows us to also stimulate and address or in stress um, our fat oxidation pathways. And so while you're still going to be utilizing a ton of carbohydrate when you're doing cardiovascular activities, we do want to improve our body's ability to do oxidative metabolism or use oxygen, um, rely on oxygen and be able to oxidize fat so it can spare carbs and or as an alternative fuel source along with carbohydrate during our higher and um, longer whatever cardiovascular activities that we are doing. And so um, all of this is stimulated through these high repetitive contractions, easy type training, and that allows us to improve something called our cardiovascular base. And this is this large reserve. And the nice thing about zone two, like I mentioned earlier, is that you can do a really high volume of it. You can do a ton of it. So when I'm training for an ultra marathon, I do a ton of zone two training because you can accumulate a ton of volume within that. And training for ultras requires a lot of volume of training, but you don't need to be training for an ultra marathon to get benefits from this. You can just be someone who does passive cardio at the gym, a bodybuilder who's concerned with their gains, a strength or power athlete who's just trying to improve their cardiovascular health. And what's nice about zone two training is it isn't highly fatiguing. So not only does it allow us to accumulate a high volume of training, which allows us to get a high training stimulus. And, um, that is really indicative of the outcomes that we're going to get. That doesn't mean me saying more is better, but we doing more over time as we adapt is really good and really important. So more miles are going to make you faster, better runner. More cardio is going to make you more cardiovascularly trained runner. And having this reserve and base will also, yes, help you with your Metcons and, and other things like your group fitness classes, things like that. But you can do a ton of it, like I said, but it's not as fatiguing. And so this is a big reason when it comes to hybrid training, you or me or the people who follow my EWAC hybrid and or what I do are able to do cardiovascular training along with resistance training is because we're not making every single cardiovascular effort. We make these high heart intensity, speed work, threshold, max out all the time things, but we can accumulate volume that stimulates those pathways in large amounts that allow us to increase cardiovascular demands 
in a way that also isn't super fatiguing on our neuromuscular system and or will essentially buy from our fitness in our next workout, whether that's strength or speed work or whatever it is, especially as we adapt to it over time. So zone two is fantastic. I love it. Um, there's either polarizing training or pyramidal training, and there's some controversy in the endurance world about what's better, but really theoretically polarized training is that you're going to hang out and do a ton, like 80, 20 in zone two, and then 20% or 10% even, um, in those higher zone models. And then pyramidal is kind of like, okay, you do a ton of zone two training. And then that 10 to 20%, depending on your total training volume will be zone three, four, five, not just completely ignoring three. So we'll get to three in a second here. So with that being said, zone two is your friend. Um, it is really hard to stay in zone two. People complain about it all the time. I know, I know, I know. But if you're interested in learning more tips and tricks, especially for running for staying in zone two, make sure to snag a copy of Endure because it will really break that down for you with tons of t uh, tricks, tips, and ways to kind of work with that within yourself, using RPE, talk test, adjusting for heat and humidity, all those things that can affect your heart rate um, and allowing you to kind of know what you're doing. Because the biggest thing with zone two is that it's not necessarily that you're trying to keep your heart rate down, although that is a great indicator of your intensity is that you're trying to keep your body from accumulating a ton of um, lactate. And lactate is what people tend to call lactic acid since they make it sore. It's not lactic acid, but uh, it's something called lactate, which is a really cool molecule in our body. But when we accumulate a lot of it, it's more indicative of higher intensity exercise or fatigue. And that's not a bad thing. But really the goal with zone two training or easier training is to keep that lactate level lower. So if you find yourself starting to breathe heavier, um, unable to talk, um, unable to feel a sustainable pace that feels almost so easy that you can go all day um, and or any kind of muscular fatigue as you're going, you're probably going too hard. So really, well, heart rate doesn't need to be perfect. There's other ways that we can assess this intensity. I think some people use their inability to keep their heart rate in zone two as an excuse to not do it, but really it takes time and practice give it more than a couple of weeks. Like I'm talking months of doing it. Even if your heart rate kind of spikes and goes back down, you have to run, walk, all of those things. Um, but really you're just trying to not let your body accumulate, um, physiological fatigue in multiple ways, but really just keeping your blood lactate down. So you don't need to go get a lactate meter to test this. Um, but really just like keep a check with your body. If you start to feel like you're becoming more of an anaerobic state, quote unquote, where you're breathing heavier, having to slow down, can't sustain intensities, things like that, you're probably pushing too hard. So really that's what the main goal of this zone is. So heart rate is great because if you're doing a linear VO2 max test in a lab, um, or a lactate threshold test, generally heart rate's going to increase with that lactate. And that's why we can use heart rate with this. Um, and that also really does vary and depend on person to person. Some people have la higher lactate thresholds or um, crux points on which they start to influx higher than others. So if you're more fit, you might be further along in the spectrum versus less fit. You might be accumulating lactate sooner and just needing to slow down or walk or low your pace um, below what your ego wants you to. But that is the biggest thing there. So understanding the physiology there, I think helps people know that like, why they're kind of doing this and staying in these intensity zones um, and avoiding things because then we get into zone three.